Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Mac OS Catalina has been released to the public. It's now available for your Mac if it's supported and to find out if it's supported, you can go to Apple's website that shows which Macs specifically are supported. There are an awful lot, many of them from 2012 and newer or a 2015 MacBook and newer, but I'll link that in the description below. Now let's go over all of the different features and changes and the actual download is going to take you a while because it came in at about 4.9 gigabytes for me. So just expect it to be fairly large when you go ahead and install that. Now, the first thing you may notice is there is no more iTunes, and that is probably the biggest shift on this particular version. Instead of iTunes, we now have four different apps or three apps and a different change. So we have music, we have TV, we have podcasts, and then we use Finder for some of the other functions. So for example, instead of iTunes, it's now called music. So let's go into music. And you'll see it's just telling me my volumes all the way down. That's because I'm recording this. Now I've expanded this out, and as you can see, if you're familiar with music on your phone or an iPad, it's very familiar. So you'll have your account in the upper right, and then on the left you'll have Apple Music, you'll have your For You, Browse and Radio, and then you'll have your library along with your playlist below this, and they all sync. And you'll see it says updating artist artwork. This may take a while, but you'll see these are all of the different things that I have have in For You, and then I can go into the library see all of my other music and things like that recently added for example so there's a lot of familiarity and simplification going on here as well if we go into the preferences you'll see that we can sync the library we have automatic downloads we also have playback under playback we can crossfade songs and things like that and change the quality of the playback so if you're into higher res audio, of course you can bump that up. And then we have files in different locations if you wanna just add music. And then you have some restrictions as well as advanced. And what you'll see is these settings are very familiar across all of the new apps. So let's go ahead and close this out and go into the next one. And the next one is podcasts. So if we go into podcasts, again, you'll see that I have my podcasts here. It looks just like the music app with listen now and browse and top charts, and it syncs with the podcast app on your phone. So if you have it on your phone or iPad, it's going to be the exact same. And again, if I go into podcasts and I click preferences, you'll see that it's going to basically have a similar layout to what we had with music, with playback and advanced, and then we can sync subscriptions across our devices. And it's a really simple, easy way to see the podcast and have it broken out since this is a pretty big category these days. And then finally, the TV app. And the TV app is really simple. Again, it's, it's just like what you have on your iPad or iPhone and also Apple TV. So you have Watch Now, you have Movies, you have TV shows, you even have a kids section along with library. And then you can see maybe some recently added movies that you've purchased, things like that. And you can scroll through them and just play them here. Now there are some additions with the TV app. So even though it's similar to music, it also syncs everywhere now. So maybe I start Spider-Man Far From Home, I get halfway through it. When I get on my iPhone, it will pick up where it left off on the Mac. So that's really nice. And then also it adds Dolby Atmos support. So we'll have that as well. So those are really nice features that they've just brought across. Again, simplifying it, but also making it better. Again, if I go to preferences, you'll see it's the same. So always check for available downloads. We've got basically the same exact settings in all of these apps. So restrictions, all of the same sort of idea. So I'll go ahead and close this out. And now the one thing you may be thinking if you're not familiar with this is, what do I do if I have an iPhone and I want to update it or restore it? How do I do that? Well, let me show you how you do that. Now, once you've plugged in your iPhone, your iPod, iPod Touch, or iPad, go ahead and click on Finder. And on Finder, on the left here, you'll see that it says iPhone. Click on iPhone, and now it looks basically the same as it did before. We have all of the same information, just like we did before in iTunes, but instead it's now in Finder. So instead of having iTunes do everything, it's now split up, and you can have check for update or restore your phone and see your music, and they've just split it into different sections. 
You'll see the different things here, TV shows, podcasts, things like that, audiobooks, books, photos, etc. So you get the idea. It's very simple. They've just moved it to Finder, and you access it like any other device or drive. So it's really nice that way, and I think uh, it's easy enough to get used to once you know where everything's at. Now let's go ahead and close that out and take a look at the next thing. Now they've made some changes to system preferences. It has more options and it looks slightly different. So if we move this to the center here, you'll see I have my name at the top along with my, my Animoji or picture, whatever I'm using on my phone. And now we have one place for our Apple ID. So you'll see Apple ID and family sharing. You can set these up right here. It's very simple and straightforward. And if I click on my Apple ID, it opens up. And on the left, it gives me an overview. I have my name, phone, and email, password and security, and is all of my devices and media and purchases here as well. So everything's here. It's telling me my iCloud storage. We can turn it on and off, see everything that we would normally see, again, just like we would on an iPhone or an iPad. They're really unifying the way this works across all devices. So. I think this makes it much easier across not only the Mac, but everything else. It's kind of all the same now. Also, if I click on the word overview, you'll see it says one account for everything you do with Apple, manage your Apple ID, view your subscriptions and payment information and adjust iCloud preferences for this Mac. So it's just saying it's unifying everything. Now, if we go back, we have some new wallpaper. So you may have already seen the one in the background here. This is the default wallpaper but we have some new ones as well. So if we go to desktop and screensaver, you can scroll down through here and you'll see we have some really nice different images. So here's one Catalina shoreline and it shows all of the different images. And so that's really nice. Just scroll through. There's not a ton of them. You'll see there's about eight to 10, depending on if you want to include the night or day or night modes that you have, it will switch depending on the time of day. I really like this light version of Catalina Day, but if you wanna change that, you can. And then if we go back and go to general, if you're not familiar with dark mode, as you'll, you're seeing it here, we can go to light mode, dark mode, have it auto switch, whatever we'd like. So we'll just leave it how it is for now. It's a little easier to see, and that's it. Now you may notice here as well, we have some notifications. There's a new icon and these are all of your notifications from different applications that you may or may not want to disturb you. So you can turn on, do not disturb. You have a little bit more access to different settings and things like that. Again, more access to things like wallet and Apple pay. You've got your spotlight search, but we now have screen time as well. So if you use screen time on your iPhone and iPad, you now have it on your Mac. So currently it's off. We could turn it on and then we can see our things like app usage, our notifications, how often we open or close the device or pick it up. If it's an iPhone, we can set downtime for a time we want to not use the device. We can set app limits always allowed and content and privacy. Now, aside from the changes I've already gone over in preferences, there are some new icons that have changed as well. And there's also sidecar. We'll talk about that in a moment, but Apple has updated the app store a little bit in this update and they've added arcade. So if you're not familiar with arcade, you can have a hundred plus games for four 99 a month. And again, this spans across all your devices. Now, Apple TV and iPhones and iPads. So, you can play all of these games on all your devices. So if you prefer to use a Mac, you can use a Mac, whatever you'd like. They've also updated the Mac to support Catalyst apps. So, or Mac Catalyst. And what this is, is it now allows apps that run on iPad to run on your Mac it more easily for the developer to just move them over. So for example, Apple gave Twitter as an example, you've got the Twitter app on your iPhone and iPad it will now be able to easily be moved to the Mac so you can use it here. There will be games and other apps as well. And Apple also has a couple Catalyst apps. One of them is Stocks, and it looks just like the iPad app. You'll see you can scroll through the news. You have your Stocks on the left, and then you can make this larger or smaller. And the apps are okay, but they're very simple. So we'll see how that goes later throughout the year with different applications as they start to support it. Now, aside from that, Apple has made a major change to photos. It's been completely redesigned just like it was on iOS 13 and iPad OS. 
And as you can see, as I scroll through, there's some video playing in real time. This is iPhone footage I took uh, using my iPhone of the new Surface devices. So it's pretty nice just to be able to scroll through and see these. And then on the left, we have memories. And memories, you'll see it says I'm in nature. You'll see this is from September. And this is the leak of the iPad, or it's the iPad Pro coming out probably later this month. And there's just some more things here as well. So we've got my trip to Manhattan. We've got my Tesla here and just some other trips. And you can go into these and get more details. So this was an update that came out while I was on a trip and you'll see all the photos. Now you can also see things like your favorites and people and places like we could before, but it's just more simplified. But if we go into one of the photos, we now have new editing tools. So if we go into edit, we can fully adjust everything. And then it also will integrate tightly with things like Pixelmator, if you have that app, Pixelmator Pro, for example. But we can adjust everything from white balance. You can adjust skin tone. You can adjust the curves of the image. So if we wanna change this, we can change the image in real time. And it's nice and fast. So everything works really well, or we can just have it do, do everything automatically and just see what it looks like. So, and it will, revert to an, the original with no problem. It's non-destructive editing and it works really well. You've got all sorts of options now. So you really don't even need Photoshop if you're just doing basic adjustments. So it's really nice or Lightroom or anything like that. You can do it all from here if you're just doing minor changes. Now, if we close out of this, Apple has updated the Reminders app. It's a completely new app, as you can see here. It looks different. It syncs, of course, across your other devices. But if we want to add something, we can just add a reminder. Remind me to publish this video. You can add a location, add a date. We'll go into the eye here. We can remind me on a day or at a location, add an image, add a URL, give it a priority. And you can even have lists with families and maybe something like a grocery list, for example. You have a lot of different options for using this as reminders, sharing it, scheduling it, flagging it. It's really simple. And if you use a reminders app, uh, this one is probably enough for most people. There are others out there, but this one is a very nice redesign from what Apple had before. Let's go ahead and close this out. And another thing they've changed is find my, and now on the iPhone, there used to be find my friends and find my iPhone. They've combined them into this new app called Find My, and we have it on the Mac as well. So let's go ahead and open it up. On the left, I have myself and then all of the different people whose locations I'm aware of and or I'm sharing with. And then I also have access to my devices as well. It will pinpoint where they're located. And you can see it on a really nice map that we have here. Of course, I don't live anywhere near here, but it will pinpoint exactly where they're located, where your device is, where your family is, and someone else can log in here too if they're trying to find their device. So it's really nice. It's just a simple map with a hybrid view and a satellite view, but I think you get the idea. Now let's go back into preferences and talk about Sidecar. To use Sidecar, you can either use it wired using USB-C to USB-C or USB-C to Lightning if you have that or whatever combination, or you can do it wirelessly if you're on the same wireless network. So on the Mac, for example, just go to select device, select the device you want to connect to, and you need to have iPad OS running on the iPad. Give it just a moment, and now we have Mac OS running through Sidecar on iPad OS. So we can use the pencil to move this around. Let me move this in a little bit closer here. You can move the window around. Maybe we want to open Safari wait for it to open. We can go to our favorite website, wait for it to load, and then we can scroll through the website using two fingers. And depending on your wireless connection, that will make a difference as far as latency is concerned. But if you want the best experience, just use it wired. Now, the other thing you can do is maybe you want to use Final Cut Pro in here or maybe Photoshop. You can use the pencil to do that and drag around and paint and things. So you have that option to do that. You can close out the windows, whatever you want to do, you can use the iPad to control everything. And this used to be done using other apps and things like that, but now it's native to Mac OS Catalina and iPad OS. So it's a really nice feature. The other thing you can do with it as well is mirror your display. So maybe you just want a secondary display or you want to mirror the display. You can do that as well. Now, if we go out of sidecar, 
you'll see we have something new under accessibility. So let's go into accessibility. And then under accessibility, we have something called voice control. And voice control allows us to completely control the computer using just our voice. So if we enable this, it's taking a moment. The first time you turn it on, it will take a moment. Now, when we have voice control enabled, it will allow us to control the Mac completely by our voice. So if we have a little bit of a problem, either clicking on things, maybe we have motor skill issues, or maybe we have the complete loss of our limbs altogether, we can completely control everything with our voice instead of using a mouse. So let me give you a quick example. Open music. And you'll see the music app open. Quit music. And now it's gone. So that gives you an idea. You can use this to type. You can use it to dictate a note or whatever you'd like. It's very intuitive. There's a bunch of different commands you can give it as well. There's a full vocabulary. You'll see there's all the different commands and it's very comprehensive. So it's, I think this will be very useful for people in need. Now there's a couple other enhancements as well. If I bring Safari up here again, where it gives the support in Mac Catalina devices, if you hover over a word and you hold the command key, it actually makes that word larger. So if I hold command and move over any of this text, if I'm having trouble seeing it, you can just hover over it and it makes it a little bit larger. It makes it very nice to be able to see this. There's also another option so that maybe you have a secondary display plugged in. If you have a secondary display plugged in, you can use one display zoomed in and the other regular like we're seeing here. So we might have this portion of the display zoomed in right here on one display and on another display have it zoomed out. We now have the option to do that. Now if I go back into Safari and I open a new tab holding Command T, you'll see there's an all new start screen. The start screen again is just like we have on iPad or iPhone with iOS 13. And so we have a new start page. We also have Siri suggestions if we have it turned on. We also get weak password warnings as well. And then we can use picture in picture from the tab where the audio button is. So maybe you're in an application that's using audio. You'll see a little audio button here. Let me show you what I mean. At the top here, you'll see we have this little audio icon. And if I option click or right click, I have the tab with sound. Now this doesn't work everywhere, but if I do the same thing again, I can enter picture in picture mode. If it supports it, you have to have video that will support this. But generally I have not been able to get it to work with things like YouTube or Vimeo. And that was my own video playing. I just could not get it to work. So it was not something that I was able to find anything that was really relevant at this point for that. Now, another nice thing is if you start typing the address of something for a tab that's already open, you'll see that Apple will actually automatically recommend you to switch to that tab if you're using Safari. So you'll see it finds this tab here, it says switch to tab, and it sees that we already have that website open. So again, if you're in a tab, type one that's already open, you'll see you can switch to that tab. It's really nice, very simple and straightforward, but it's a nice little touch. Let's go ahead and close Safari. Now QuickTime is actually getting an update and I don't know the last time QuickTime was updated, but it gets some significant updates and one of them is picture in picture support. So let me go into a very old video from last year and you'll see this is iOS 11.4.1 .1 beta five. So it's a pretty old video, but you'll see now we have picture in picture support. So that's really nice. We also have transparent video support time code support. And then if we go into window, you'll see there's show movie inspector. This will give us more information specifically about what we're seeing here. So it tells you the format it's in, the size of the video, as far as resolution, the data size, the data rate. So it's, it's pretty nice. You've just got more information as opposed to what you had before. So it's just a little update, but something that adds a little more value to QuickTime. Now, if you're using the home app, that gets a very small update. So let's get out of this folder and then we'll go over to home. And in the home app, just like with iOS 13, it now supports cameras. So it supports secure video cameras that will be encrypted end to end. And then also maybe we want to change one of these icons here. We can 
option click or right right click go to settings and here we have the little light bulb icon if i click on that i can change it to what represents the type of light that i'm using so maybe it's a table lamp or a different type recessed lighting i can change it to whatever i'd like so it's just a couple little updates so very nice very small but it's a nice little addition mail gets a little update as well so let's go into mail now within mail we have the option to unsubscribe from mailing lists now so you'll see it says this message is from a mailing list unsubscribe i actually appreciate these emails so uh, i won't unsubscribe but you have that option now now if we go to another email maybe we don't want anything sent from the app store anymore if we click on the name here we can now block the contact so if we don't want any more email from apple we could block it if we wanted to you can also mute threads if you have a big thread of different information going back and forth you don't want to see anymore and you have this new classic updated layout and that is really it for mail there's not a whole lot new but there's some real small refinements and things like mute here as well or notify me as well for these type of emails so overall it's a nice little update if you're used to a lot more features you may want to look at a different email app but let's go ahead and close this one out and take a look at the next thing and the next one is notes so if i go into notes you'll see it says what's new and this is all that's new so i just wanted to show you this so we have a new gallery view so we can see them in a tiled fashion we also have new checklist options so we had checklists but now you can automatically move them to the bottom you can quickly reorder them and you can share folders so you can share a folder with someone so that they can participate and collaborate on something so we'll hit continue and you'll see here's the tiled view and here's all of my recent video notes so maybe i'll go into this one that just says iphone battery percentage and in here if i want to collaborate i can just add a contact here add people to this note and then they can collaborate so it's very simple there's not a whole lot new like i said there's new checklist options for sorting and things like that if you option click or right click on on things but other than that it's basically the same with a few extra features now they did improve some security as well so if we go into system preferences you'll see if we go to security and privacy they've changed this a little bit we'll wait for it to open but things just like screen recording like i'm doing now have changed so they're individualized now so screen recording quicktime player is allowed to screen record if i go into maybe photos access or location services it's all broken up into different groups or microphone for example uh, you need to give access specifically for each application. They've also completely made the whole OS in its own read only volume, which is separated from everything else. It cannot be overwritten. So maybe you're afraid of getting a virus or something like that. It cannot write to the core OS or the kernel part of the OS. Everything else operates around it, which should help with things like viruses or different malware also if you have a mac that has a t2 chip in it you can activation lock it so maybe it gets stolen or someone has it that shouldn't have it or someone finds it or something you can lock it down and only you can access it now there is a new option to approve with apple watch if you're using your apple watch for security purposes you can approve different purchases now using the side button on the apple watch to authenticate so things like notes and apps and things like that or view passwords should be accessible through that i have not been able to use that yet though and that is everything new that's major in Mac OS Catalina. So there are a few little changes here and there all over the place. This is probably the least updated OS out of all of the new ones, but it does have a lot of similar features and will continue to work really well. It should have some performance improvements as well. And I've seen no slowdown on this older 2016 MacBook that I'm recording from now. But if you've found anything else significant, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.